Hello and welcome to FAGO. My name is Al Chidoro. The following video is a window into how we manufacture FAGO beverages. Since 1907, we have been producing great tasting soft drinks. Please enjoy the following video and see how we make those great tasting flavors. The year was 1907, and outside their small store on Hastings Street and historic Eastern Market, the FAGO magic began. When my grandfather Ben Faginson and his brother came to this country. They were bakers. That's all they really knew how to do. So when they got into soft drinks, every flavor they made was based on icing recipes from their, uh, from their bakery. Faginson Brothers Bottling Works shortened their company name to Fago. In 1935, they opened their new Gratiot Avenue headquarters. Today, it's where Fago makes over 60 different flavored soft drinks and sparkling waters. And here's where we keep all our secret recipes. Come on, I'll give you a peek. Deep in the heart of the Fago factory is where we keep our classified recipes. They're hidden away, safely secured, and they're all recorded right here in our Fago flavor recipe book. So, let's see how Fago is made. I get the question of what I did here, and I always use my grandson, and my kids always called me the chief elixir mixer, so I said that's pretty much what I did. I was the chief elixir mixer here. Like pop star chefs in the kitchen, here is where their carbonation creations are concocted. It's where we mix flavors and ingredients that will eventually become pop. And Perry Ben Faginson were the owners, and they ran the company. And Perry Faginson was the flavorist, and uh, he had a lot of distrust for chemists. So I was here 11 years before he showed me how to make the flavors. <laughs> now that you've seen behind the scenes, let's see how Detroit's other assembly line brings the taste of Fago to the people. Here you see the bottles coming in. They're, we get them from a, manu a bottle manufacturer with the labels already on them. They're fed into this large depalletizer, we call it, which takes the bottles off row by row and sends them to the filling line. Now we have half liter bottles, we have 24 ounce bottles, we have two liter bottles, we have one liter bottles, we have 12 ounce can, 12 packs. Thousands and thousands of bottles travel down conveyors stretching almost the entire length of the factory. Then they're washed thoroughly before being sent on to the filling station. One of, the, one of the key elements in producing pop is to put the bubbles in, the carbon dioxide. So it goes through, the water goes through a process where the water is chilled down. Then the syrup, which came from the syrup room, is mixed with five parts water. And then it all goes into a carbo cooler. This carbo cooler is literally where the carbon dioxide or the bubbles are added to the pop. At the filling station, each bottle is individually filled with soda. Bottles go in empty and come out filled with delicious and refreshing Fago flavors. What flavor is red pop? Because it says right on the can, strawberry soda. But it's, we, we had to write something on the can. So we put strawberry soda because that's the thing that tastes most closely, but it's not. It's, uh, well, it's a secret. A capping machine high overhead mixes the caps like a giant bingo drum. It washes the caps and begins to distribute them to the crowning machine. Then they're screwed tightly to the soda bottles at lightning speeds and sent on their way down the line. After the bottles are filled and the crowns are put on top, or the, the caps, they go, they go into this heater washer. Some, uh, frequently, the bottles get wet or some, something spills on them. So we put them through a washer and at the same time it's a heater because you can't put a cold, wet bottle into a cardboard box because the cardboard box would uh, collapse. The bottles are now filled and cleaned and dried and are wrangled mechanically to get them ready for packaging. We make millions and millions of cases of Fago. It's really consumed very quickly. I don't think the product sits on our floor for more than three, four days before we ship it out. The bottles are boxed and wrapped in plastic, 24 to a case, then they're transferred to pallets once again as we get ready to ship them out. 
This wild swinging thing is our uh, shrink wrap. It goes all the way around the, the cases on the pallet and it solidifies the pallet so we can ship, ship them to distant locations. Master Hilo drivers carefully remove the giant pallets of pop from the end of the assembly line. They're given a free lift from the floor to the loading area, where they're skillfully loaded onto our Fago trucks and ready to ship to wherever it is you get your fill of Fago. So there you have it. After all of the selling and all of the production and all of the loading and, and hard sweat that went into it, the final piece is loading the red pop onto the truck and delivering it to over 4,000 customers here locally.